All right, hello. It's time for another video. This was something that was requested of me of a lot of people recently, so I figured I would do a full video overview on just this one topic, which is trap pouches. Specifically, ones that are stacked on top of each other or underneath other things. So this is something that has become really common, really, you know, a really common thief detection, and I'm going to tell you how to get past it. So let's take a look. First, this is this is the situation, right? Just to set the stage, so to speak. So you come across somebody, you're in a dungeon, you're you're an honest, you know, man or woman looking to, to make a living, and uh, you're snooping around in somebody's pack, right? And you see something kind of like this. You see something where you're you're dragging things around, and oh, there's a there's a pouch under there. They've hidden a pouch underneath something, right? Uh, and how do I get to it? How do I get to that pouch? That's one common scenario where there's a pouch hidden under a thing. The even more common scenario is this one, top left. You see a million trap pouches in the top left, right? And you drag one off and there's another one underneath it. Ah, oh, oh no, how do we get past it? So this is something that if you watched the my very, very first masterclass video when uh, I was at that point still relatively new to Outlands, I was using the object, the, the interface resizing to get around this and the top left always, you know, gave trouble. Well, it's been a long time since then. And in my second masterclass video, I went over a script that basically would find these pouches automatically. That has been removed all automatic finding and automatic stealing is now impossible on outlands which is good that's like the old like script thief thing right that's all gone you cannot find anything in somebody's pouch that functionality has been removed so you can no longer use that script that i showed in the second masterclass video to find hidden pouches so how do we find hidden pouches now and spoiler it's object delay so even for people who are familiar with object delay if you're an expert at this i recommend watching this still because i go over some advanced tips and tricks in order to make it just a little bit easier to use or a little bit more effective so let's dig into it let's talk about object delay so object delay is a setting in razor so if you open razor you go to options and then targeting and cues, you will see these two things here. You will see auto cue object delay, it'll be unchecked, and you'll see object delay with a time in milliseconds. So this is the magic. You'll notice that when I drag this thing, it pops back after a small delay. That delay is in fact 400 milliseconds. That's what this thing here determines. Now, if you change this, the maximum value this can be changed to is only four seconds or 4,000 milliseconds. So even if I make this 999999 or whatever, it doesn't matter. It'll cap at 4,000. So we'll just put it at 4,000 now for convenience. And if I change that setting and then I go back into the game, you'll notice no change. Nothing's happening. It's behaving identically, right? That is because you must also check this option above it auto queue object delay this must also be checked now the magic happens where now if i drag something the very first one will have no discernible difference and then subsequent drags will pop things off and now all of a sudden you can see that pouch and you'll notice slowly over time they'll pop back in right one will pop back in roughly every four seconds based on this delay here. And we'll talk about that in a second. But what this lets you do is this ultimately is the only way right now that you can access hidden pouches where I'll come in, I will change object delay to 4,000. I will turn it on by checking this box. I will then drag things off. You can then double click that pouch that will set it to be last object. Then you can go in and you can turn this off Again, you turn it off by setting it back to a low value and then unchecking that box, return it to its normal state. And then you'll see that bag opens. And at this point, it's on last object. So if I just hit my last object key, bam, it comes up. And I can see that pouch full of delightful things like regents and smoke bombs and stuff. So that, in a nutshell, is how you access things that are hidden. Now, basically what I want to do is I want to go over two things here in this video one is an overview of how object delay 
works in more detail than I just gave, because there are some in intricacies of it that are important to know about. And the second part is going to be advanced tips and tricks, some scripts I have built to make this uh, more usable and bypass some of the issues that come up with it. So let's dig into the first one. Um, the first thing that's important here to note is that this, if I change this to 4,000 milliseconds, four seconds, right? What it is doing is it means that I have four seconds to drag something and any remaining time will get added and compound. So let's go and actually draw an example of this here, right? If we have a timeline here, let's say this is four seconds, right? And let's say that I successfully drag the item in the first second, right? I drag here. The remaining four seconds will get added, added to the next drag. And this compounds, right? So now when I do the next drag, let's say again, I drag it in ab about a second. The item will not reappear. This item, second item will reappear in not just three-ish seconds, right? If this is one second period here, and this is three seconds here, three seconds here, what will happen is the three seconds from the first one that remain will get added to the second one, and it will actually reappear in six seconds like so and this keeps compounding right so if i do this if i drag four items in one second right then the fourth item will reappear in 12 seconds and you get more and more and more and more time what this means is that even though object delay is capped at four seconds you can get past literally infinite pouches infinite you could have a stack of 100 pouches and you can keep dragging because every one that you drag as long as you do it faster than four seconds will add the remaining time to the next one so we can sort of take a look at this right if i if i turn object delay on again and i start dragging everything in this pouch boom 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 drag these these things just drag that thing again and now we just wait right that last thing i dragged was like scissors Look how long it takes for scissors to come back. Scissors are not coming back after four seconds. They're still gone. We're waiting. We're waiting. There's still no scissors. We're waiting, right? This basically just shows that you have huge amounts of time. So you can literally dig to the bottom of anyone's pack. No amount of items will stop you or protect a pouch uh, because object delay compounds like this. Okay, now let's talk about some problems with with object delay, right? Because it is a pain in the ass to use. The first problem that if you're using this, you'll probably encounter is if somebody runs away, an item like a bag will get stuck on your cursor, right? You're you're looking in somebody's pack, you try to drag something, it gets stuck on your cursor. How do you get rid of it? This is pretty simple. It's annoying, but it's simple. Simply try to drop it in your own bag. Straightforward, right? So if an, ob if an item is stuck on your cursor, drag it into your own bag, release, and it will, uh, or click, and it will get rid of that stuck item. Okay. Now let's go on to the second problem. This one is the much more uh, significant problem in, that you encounter when you're using this out in the wild, which is bag caching. This is somewhat complicated. So again, I'm gonna go into it in a little bit of detail here. If, if you don't care, you can fast forward to the section that just goes over the cool tips and tricks, but this is a valuable thing to, to understand and keep in mind because sometimes you will have a bag on last target, all right? And you will run over somebody, you'll hit, uh, or last object rather, you'll hit last object and it won't open. And you'll, you'll go, but why? Why doesn't it work, all right? So let's do an example of this. So I'm gonna dig into this pouch here, right? So object delay is on. I drag this, I'm gonna double click that bag. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna turn this off, right? Now, I can hit my last object key, bam, this bag opens, the bag with the smoke bombs. And I'm going to save that onto a bag hotkey, which if you haven't seen this at the end of my second masterclass video, I go over bag hotkeys. They're really useful and important. So I just saved that to the bag hotkey. Now I'm going to run away from this person. This is the important thing. If anyone ever gets beyond about a screen's distance away from you, their bags will uncache. They will no longer be available. So let's look at what this means. I'm just going to run outside of my house here a little bit. Not too far, 
right? Aggro that bear. Now we're going to come back here. I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to hit last object. I'm going to hit that bag hotkey I was saving. I'm hitting it right now. I'm slamming it. No bag is coming up, all right? This is because I went too far away, and the bag, I lost the cache. Now, this is important. This is not the same as last target, right? There is a setting in Razor that will make last target survive infinite distance. I go over it in my first video, right? This is different. This is bags, not last target. In order to access a bag, you must have always had the prior bag cached. So again, let's look at an example of this, right? The first pack here, her backpack, I'm if I open that, it is this bag here. And then inside of this bag is a second pouch, which is this pouch here, okay? In order to access this second pouch, this green pouch here, the first pouch it's inside must be cached. And by cached, what that means is it means you must have opened it. And if, if the player moves beyond about a screen distance worth, you must open it again before you can access any bags inside of it. So if I move away, even though I have the green bag saved in my hotkey, I need to reopen any bags prior to it that it might be nested in before I can access it. So the reason I saved this bag off on a bag hotkey is to demonstrate this. I'm now going to open her backpack. So I've opened it, right? And I do not need to dig through it again because I have that hidden pouch saved on a hotkey. Just the fact that I have opened it has recached it, right? This section here is now safe. Bam, done, successful. Uh, and now I can just hit my bag hotkey, boom, and it opens up the bag, right? So if you're ever slamming your last object key on a saved bag and it doesn't open, it is because a prior bag that it is inside of has lost, has no longer become cached and you need to reopen it. So if people have packs, you know, pouches inside pouches inside pouches, it's very useful to save each one off on a hotkey so that you can incrementally recache them to access the one that you ultimately want to get into. Okay, now, so these are the two problems. You have problem number one, which is if people are moving around a lot and that causes you things to get stuck on the cursor, that's relatively easy to solve. Problem number two is because they're moving around a lot and it will sometimes take you some time to dig through the pouch, you'll some they'll get too far away and you'll lose the initial cache. So if you're only on last object, right, then you might have to get th dig through prior packs and then you'll lose your last object and it'll make you have to dig through the pouch again. We don't want that. So those are the problems. That basically segues into section two, advanced tips and tricks to make object delay more usable. For this, I have written some custom scripts that I use uh, that I will show here and recommend. Different thieves use object delay differently. Some leave it on all the time, um, right? So it, this, is, this is just preference, but I prefer using these scripts that I have made to make it a little bit easier. So now uh, I'm going to talk about these advanced tips and tricks. The first one is actually not a script. The first one is just a tip. And that tip is if you go into general, in Razor, there's a checkbox here that says use smart always on top. If I check that and then click back into UO, Razor stays on top of it. This is really nice because I need to be changing this delay quite frequently. So what I do is I will just put it down here in the corner and leave it on top. Now I can be playing the game, going about my business and access object delay really quickly here without having to alt tap. So I recommend putting Razor on top. Okay. Now, now for the, the advanced scripts, I have written some scripts that I use to make object delay uh, a little bit more usable. What they do is that it creates a list of bags. I can add bags to a list and then it lets me access those incrementally. So this is a collection of three different scripts. We can see if I pull up my scripts here. Mm, scripts, Cosma, bag list. Right, so you can see I have bag list add to, bag list clear, and bag list iterate. And I'll I'll show these in more detail here in a second. But basically, it's a collection of three scripts that do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to whoop, I'm going to turn on object delay. So we're going to put it to 4,000 auto queue. We're going to go into this bag here, um, and then if I hit my 
hotkey that for my script, it will prompt me to add a bag. And I can click on something like this trap pouch. And you can see new trap pouch added is listed here. And if I try to do it again, it'll be that trap pouch is already in the list. So what I can do is I can drag stuff. And every time I see a pouch, I will just add it to this list. So there's one, right? Add that to the list. Okay, and then we're gonna dig through here. Dig, add, dig, add, dig, add, dig, add. Right there is now the real pouch. We'll add that one too. Um, right, make sure there's nothing else. Okay, cool. So now basically I'll just like dig through the pouch and every time I see a bag, I can add it onto this hotkey. At this point, even if they run away, I have everything in this list. So now I can safely turn object delay off, not have to worry about it ever, ever again, right? And now the second hotkey for my script basically iterates through that list and it puts all non-trapped pouches at the front of the list. So you can see if I hit this hotkey once, it will open the first trap pouch that I added or the first untrapped pouch. If I hit it again, it'll open the second untrapped pouch. So this is the one at the very bottom of that stack of trap pouches. There is a untrapped pouch at the very bottom. That's the one with this skirt in it, right? And now if I keep hitting it, now it'll start going through the trapped ones, right? So you can see, oh, that trapped container had no items in it. The next one had no trapped items in it. The next one had trapped items in it, right? And then when I reach the bottom of the list, it, you can see it'll say starting over at first bag. So I can just slam this hotkey, right? And it'll wrap around this list. It'll try to open every single bag in that list. And it'll just keep trying to do it. So I can just run past somebody and just slam this hotkey. Bam, 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 right? And it'll traverse through all their pouches. So add the pouches into this list and then iterate through them. And then the last hotkey I have just clears it. So you can see if I hit that hotkey, um, it will clear the bag list, bag list cleared. Um, and that's if I'm like starting over a new pl new person, I don't want old bags on the list. So this is somewhat complex, but it's really, really useful. So let's take a look at it in practice. So the most common scenario you're gonna see is somebody who just has these trapped pouches with one untrapped pouch at the very bottom. That's the most common. So let's take a look at the most common scenario first. Here's video footage I've recorded, just like the previous times, uh, where it shows the exact scenario so we don't have to run into a dungeon and hope that we're, we're finding the exact scenario we're looking for. So in this case, I have, I've dis discovered a delightful friend here, Hobo Wizard. I've opened their pack. You can see their pack up here is what I see. And what I immediately see is a trap pouch in the top left corner. Again, this is the most common thing you're gonna come across. So what I will do is I will try to drag it, I immediately see there's another trap pouch underneath it. Again, expected. You now see that I go down here to the bottom of my screen where I have my object delay pinned. I turn object delay on, turn it to 4,000. I use 4,000 so I can just add or delete a zero. So it's 400 by default, 4,000 when I want it to be maxed. And then I start dragging. And an important thing to note here, most people don't actually put stuff in their trap pouches. So I don't go through, I don't bother to add every trap pouch usually by default i will just drag 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 and then only add the untrapped pouch that's what you're going to see me do here so drag 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 there's the untrapped pouch i now add that to my bag list so i hit my script hotkey it brings up the little cursor i click the bag and you can see here my little overhead confirms new bag was added this is really helpful because usually it takes about three to four seconds to do this. And by that time, the person has probably just about killed their monster and has either already started running away or is about to run away. And that's what we see here, right? So this guy immediately takes off. He starts running. This is where this script is really, really valuable because if you're just in regular object delay mode, if, that's, if you simply added that bag to the last object and if he gets far enough away, it's going to clear the cache on his backpack, you're gonna to need to click his backpack again, which will reset your last object, right? In order to access that pouch and you'd have to dig all the way through it again. I don't have to dig through it again because I have it saved independently on my back list here. So even if he got far enough away where I had to click into his backpack again, I wouldn't have to dig through his pouch. I could just click in his backpack, hit this hotkey that iterates this bag list and see it. In this case, he didn't get far enough away. So I can simply go right next to him, hit that hotkey, it'll immediately open that bag at the bottom of his trap pouches that I saved off and you can see it has another bag in it which I opened that other bag and that's where his loot is so now again I can 
uh, easily get to this whenever I want, even if I have to be doing something with a different last object because it's saved off. So he has a treasure map here, which I will go ahead and steal after taking a quick look to make sure there's nothing more valuable. Steal that and off we go. Okay, so that's the most common use case, right? That's a pouch underneath a bunch of trap pouches. Let's look at something that's a little bit more advanced in terms of thief protection that this series of tools also really helps to mitigate, which is, if we close this down, the what some people will do is they will have a bunch of trap pouches, right, uh, in the top left corner, and in the middle of one of those trap pouches, they'll actually put their loot in. So it won't be in the one at the very bottom, and it won't be at the one at the very top, because they know that thieves do exactly what I just did there, right? Where I will go and I will drag, 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 looking for the one at the bottom, right? So, and it's pretty hard to know which one is the, like, right one when you're dragging, because they all look identical. This is something where this is really valuable. If I drag a bunch of pouches and I don't see an untrapped pouch at the bottom, I will then go back, add every pouch to this list, and then I can quickly iterate through each one of them. It's basically the same as if I'm clicking each individual one, even though they're stacked on top of each other. So let's take a look at that case. So here's a person. I have already snooped this person prior to where I started this video and determined that he does not have an untrapped pouch at the bottom of his pouch stack. That means what you're going to see me do here is I'm going to add every pouch. So I, what I'm doing here is I am adding it to the, my bag list and then dragging it and then adding the next one to my bag list and dragging it, adding the next one and dragging it until I get them all on the list. So you can, oh, and you saw there he moved away and I got one stuck on the cursor and I just dropped it on my main pack in order to clear it and then I can go back and start adding again. So now I've added all of those trap pouches to my bag list. And what you can see I can do is now I can just run over to them. I turn off object delay at this point uh, because I have them all saved off. So no need to have the delay. Some again, some thieves keep it on. I don't like to keep it on because it makes things like drinking potions or opening their main pack a lot more slow or popping trap pouches a lot more slow. So I turn it off. Now. I'll walk over to him and I'll start just hitting the same hotkey. So again, the same hotkey, it'll just, I just hit the same button over and over and over again, and it'll iterate through every single one of those pouches I added onto the list. So the first one, the one at the very top has nothing in it. Of course that's expected, but then, so I hit the button again, and then it will try to snoop the next pouch underneath and you'll see, boom, I get into it, right? That one has loot in it. So he was basically hiding loot sandwiched inside of that trap pouch stack. And just general thief tip here, most thieves are going to, when you, uh, when you, or most people rather, when you pop a trap pouch, they're immediately going to start running, right? Like this guy, I pop his trap pouch and there he goes, he takes off. And the important thing here is you must be like a raccoon chasing a garbage truck, right? Even though there's only that 2000 gold discipline core in it, total garbage, aggressively go after it. Don't let it go. So uh, you'll see, I immediately prime teleport here. I break stealth and I chase after him. And I use the first teleport to basically get into that bag, which again, I had saved off because it was on that list. As soon as I uh, saw that it was popped, I saved it to a bag hotkey. And then I saved the item as last target, teleport after him again, now that it's on last target, and steal it. <laughs> so aggressively chase people down. That's the way to go. As soon as you pop a trap pouch, they're going to start running, break stealth, go after them, and grab grab the item and that is an example of getting through somebody's uh, pack that had a bunch of st stacked pouches even though it was not in an untrapped pouch at the bottom it was actually in a, a middle trap pouch right and sandwiched between other ones which is really clever that's really good protection but this technique makes it relatively easy to get through because you just iterate through each one until you find the one that that explodes Okay, I don't have a specific video for it, but there's another case I have seen that I want to demonstrate here where this is useful, which is basically people will have decoy untrapped pouches. Again, the most common thing is that you drag, 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 drag until you see an untrapped pouch, and then you're like, hmm, I found it, and you get into that, and that's where their loot is. That's true nine times out of ten. One times out of ten, somebody will be more clever, and they'll try to do either that like sandwiched trap pouch strategy or decoy untrapped pouch. So let's look at the decoy case. I'm going to go in here. I'll bring my object delay back. We'll turn object delay on. 
will go into Toma's pack here, and I'm going to start dragging these trap pouches. And what you'll see is, oh, an untrapped pouch, right? Great. I'm going to add that to my bag list. Boom. But then the important thing here, keep dragging. Because if I drag again, I drag that untrapped pouch off, there's another untrapped pouch underneath it. And this is somewhat rare, but really clever people will do this too, where they'll have a pouch that is untrapped at the bottom of the stack, and they'll sometimes put loot in it. They'll put like a level one map in it, or a discipline core, or some sort of decoy item, and then underneath that will be another pouch with their real loot. So again, just keep dragging until the entire stack is gone, and you can just keep adding things to the bag list, so you don't have to commit. You don't have to worry about which one is the real one, and which one am I going to put on last object. You can just put them all on the list, right? Just keep dragging until the entire stack is gone, add every single bag to the list, and then you can comfortably turn off object delay, chase back to that person, and then iterate through. And you can see, okay, the first one had the skirt, and then I hit it again, it opens the second one, and you can see, oh, that's where all of the trap tools were, right? In this particular example case I've set up. So that is a sort of, again, less common strat, but it's another one that this series of scripts is you know, effective at sort of managing when I need to be dealing with a bunch of packs, um, a bunch of pouches, and I only want to have to traverse them once because it's a pain to traverse them. Ooh. Okay, so those are the scenarios where I find it useful. Now let's take a look at the scripts. There Again, there's a collection of three of them. The first one here is for adding. So this will create the bag list. It will add them. I'll leave this up so you can pause the video and, and look at this if you want to try to recreate this script. The second one is iterating through the, the bag list. So I can drag this so you can see the whole script. There we go. It just fits. <laughs> um, so you can see here, right? This is the iterating. So this will, oh, my camera's in the way. Hold on. Let's move that over. There you guys go. Okay, you can see the whole you can see the whole thing here, where this will iterate through the list. It'll also wrap around, so you can just keep slamming uh, that hotkey, right? And you can um, pause here and recreate that if you're interested. Let's move this back. And then we have a really simple one, which just removes uh, removes all the bags from the list, clears all the lists, right? So if I basically, whenever I go to a new target, when I walk over and snoop somebody like this, the first thing I'll do is I'll clear my bag list when I'm re recreating this, when I'm restarting on a, on a new target here, so to speak. And that's it. So I recommend trying those out. I recommend using object delay. It's a giant pain. So I'm actually going to take a moment here and, and a, p a petition to the community, make a, make an appeal to, to Outland's community, which is this sucks. Having to deal with object delay sucks. It is, it, it's immersion breaking. It uh, feels like I'm fighting the client more than I'm fighting the other player. I think that there's an opportunity here to improve this experience for both uh, players and for thieves alike, right? I think that there would be an opportunity here to do something really cool where we make it so that object delay is no longer necessary, right? And at the same time, add more counterplay against the thieves for regular people. There's been a lot of ideas that have been proposed here. One of the ones that I like is, you know, let thieves drag the uh, things in people's pack naturally. It would not change it for the user, so you can't rearrange their pack. It would just change it on your screen. And every time you try to do that, it has a chance to do some sort of equivalent of a trap pouch kind of explosion, like let you know that the thief is nearby so that you can reveal or react, right? Uh, that's one idea. Another idea that I heard was have like a shuffle uh, button where you can just like randomly rearrange the contents of somebody's pack, um, which again, maybe has a chance to trigger that kind of detection moment. Those types of things I think would be cool ideas that would make it more immersive and provide potentially some counterplay against the thieves as well. Uh, I would welcome that as a thief myself um, because it you know also prevents using object delay and it creates more fun cat and mouse games so i encourage everyone i know a lot of people don't play thieves and they're, they're therefore not affected by this directly but if you have an opportunity to go hey maybe we could think about doing this uh this is my appeal to the community to support that and try to endorse that because i think using object delay really sucks and i know a lot of 
people like Pwn Star just won't even bother with it because it's it's so unfun. And again, right now, this is the literal only way that you can realistically and seriously steal high value items as a thief because the vast majority of the community will use this protection and there is no way other than object delay to bypass these protections. So that's my plea. Otherwise, I hope everyone has a delightful time stealing and hopefully this makes you just a little bit more successful at doing it. Bye-bye.